we've been flirting around computation complexity as well. We spoke about how much time it takes, exponential time, polynomial time. So let's start introducing that topic as well. Let's define it first. What is computational complexity theory? So computational complexity is the subfield of computer science that studies sort of the intrinsic resources that you need to solve computational problems, okay. okay? So by resources, we mean things like the amount of time, the amount of memory, okay? We could also study other resources like parallelism, right? Number of parallel processors or, you know, ra or, or randomness, you know, a number of random bits or, or quantum computational resources, right? Or, or, or many other things besides, but, you know, you, for simplicity, you can think of time and space, Okay, so uh, if you like, you know, we are taking the the you know the 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 original questions that Alan Turing and his friends thought about in the 1930s, which were you know which problems are computable and which are not, right? Which which problems have a Turing machine to solve them and which ones don't, right? And now we're saying actually that uh, very often that, uh, that uh, that's not the most relevant question right uh, uh often you know the problems that we really really care about the most i mean it's clear that they are computable right like there is a trivial algorithm that just enumerates every possible solution and checks them all one by one the problem is merely that that solution would uh, uh for for on any reasonable sized input is going to take longer than the age of the universe. Merely the problem. Right, right, right. <laughs> the problem is merely yeah. that, right? There is a there is a Turing machine, it just might not halt in in less than astronomical time, right? right? And so now like, uh, uh, you know, and, and this became increasingly clear to people in the 50s and 60s as they started building the first actual digital computers and actually using them to do things that like, yes, you know, the problems we want to solve are computable, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, the algorithms that we have take ridiculously large amounts of time, right? And so now we need to uh, zoom in further with our our computational microscope, we have to say, well, within the computable problems, which problems are, are efficiently solvable and which are not, right? And when we say efficient, you know, you might wonder what that means, right? Like, uh, you know, are, are we asking, like, is there a program that takes 10 seconds or does any program have to take 20 seconds, right? Well, that's a, a pretty nitty gritty question, right? I mean, that might depend not just on the problem itself, but also on, well, you know, how fast is your computer, right? Of course, computers have gotten millions of times faster since, you know, even just a few decades ago, right? Uh, it might depend on on uh, which instruction set do we, do we have, right? It, it might you know, uh, uh, depend on all sorts of things that are, uh, let's say, uh, uh, more, you know, engineering questions than, than mathematical ones, you know, which is not to say they aren't important, but just that, that, you know, as mathematicians, we're not, you know, we may not be able to answer, is this 10 seconds or 20 seconds, right? So it, what, what we do in computational complexity is that we mainly look at scaling behavior, Okay, so so the thing that we care about, uh, rather than like the raw number of steps or the number of seconds, is as you go to a larger and larger input, how does the no, how do the resources scale? Okay, so so uh, for example, we're very happy usually if there is linear scaling, right? If you know, which would mean what, what, when your input gets twice as large, then you need twice as much time, you know, twice as much memory, right? That's a very reasonable way to scale. OK, uh, if you have quadratic scaling, which means, you know, you use a number of steps that grows like the size of the input squared, that would say you double the length of the input. So like double the, you know, either the number of records that need to be sorted or double the number of cities in the map that you're searching for a shortest path or something like that. And that would say that that now the um, the, the running time of your algorithm increases by a factor of four. Again, you know, we're we're reasonably happy with that. With, with you know, you know, we could, you know, if something is quadratic, we could still hope to to get it down to linear, right? right. But but these are uh, these are kinds of scaling that we can deal with, right? What we really don't want to see is exponential scaling, right? Exponential scaling would say every time I add one more to the size of my input, 
then the the number of steps that I need doubles, right? Or it goes like two to the power of uh, uh, the the length of the input. Okay, because if I have exponential scaling, you know, as as uh, uh, you know, uh, we have as far as we know for let's say the problem of simulating quantum mechanics right. on a classical computer, to take one example, right? Uh, if we have exponential scaling, then um, uh, uh, you know, already when my input has size, you know, a hundred or a thousand, you know, it might be just completely infeasible to handle, right? Two to the, you know, like uh, I can handle a hundred squared, I can handle a thousand squared, but I can't, you know, I even with the biggest computers in the world today, I probably can't handle two to the hundred power, much less two to the thousand power, right? This gets into the, you know, the sort of uh, hyper astronomical numbers, the larger than the age of, larger than the scale of the universe numbers. Okay, and so then a key thing that we study in computational complexity is among all the problems that we would like to solve, which ones inherently require exponential scaling, and for which ones can we get by with only polynomial scaling meaning, you know, a number of steps or amount of memory that increases only like the, the size of the input raised to some fixed power.